Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're gonna to be looking at concrete T-beams. So quick background on T-beams, right? It's pretty similar to a regular kind of reinforced concrete section, except the first thing we need to do is figure out what our effective flange width is gonna be, so that B sub E. Uh, there's a couple different parameters there for how to solve for that, and we'll get into that um, when we get into the design. Then we need to check for the location of the neutral axis. Most of the time, the neutral axis is going to fall in uh, within the the flange, so that left image there. Uh, sometimes you can you can get it where the uh, Whitney stress block is deeper, and so you get it. It's in the flange of, or sorry, in the web of the section. And so we'll we'll talk about that and how to solve for that. And then after that, it's pretty straightforward. It's just like solving for uh, you know any other sort of rectangular section for moment capacity. Once you get these few sort of variables up front. So let's go ahead and take a look at our problem statement. Uh, if we take a look at that plan view there, we've got a floor plan uh, of a, our slab and then the, some columns there and our, our beams um, or the webs uh, in dashed lines. And we've got the red highlighted beam, which is what we're gonna be looking at. So uh, if you look at this, the cross section there, we've got a six inch thick flange. It's a 24 inch deep overall from the top of the flange to the bottom of the beam web there. Um, we've got a 12 inch wide beam. We've got six number seven bars split into two rows. Um, and we're gonna be looking at section A, right? So mainly just looking at the positive flexure. We'll do another video where we look at the negative flexure um, and the shear at the ends. Uh, but for this video, we're gonna be focusing on the positive section. We've got a, a F prime C of 4,000 PSI, FY of 60,000 PSI. Our SW, which is the clear span between adjacent webs or adjacent beams. Um, and we have a 10 foot center to center uh, a span. And so if we look at the clear span, that's gonna be basically minus six inches and minus six inches, which is a total of one foot. So we have 10 minus one foot, which gets us the nine. And then our LN, which is the length of the beam. And again, that's clear span. So inside face to inside face. Um, and if it's 24 feet uh, center to center, we take off that one foot, that gives us a 23 feet. And then our ultimate moment here is going to be 295 kip foot. So we don't need to do any beam analysis. We've already done it um, from our analysis model. And so we have a load of 295 kip foot. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and we'll start the design. All right, I've got CalcBook open now. So let's go ahead and click into our concrete design module. And then we're going to click into member designs. And then we're going to click on flexure and shear. And for this problem, uh, we really only need to look at flexure, right? We decided we're just gonna look at the mid spans. We're only looking at flexure. Um, in another video, we'll look at shear and negative bending. So let's go ahead and start by switching over our beam type to a T-shape. Uh, we are then gonna switch it to two bottom rebar layers. And then we're gonna start entering in our parameters for uh, this section. So we have 24 inches of total height, 12 inch wide beam, the flange is six inches thick. The length of the clear longitudinal span, right? So the length of the beam face to face of the support, uh, we said was 23 feet, which is uh, 276 inches. Our transverse uh, span from web to web is uh, nine feet, which is 108 inches. And our center to center vertical spacing of the rebar uh, is 1.5 inches. And then our clear cover is about 1.5 inches as well. We need to enter in our flexural reinforcement. So we go ahead and enter in. We have six number seven bars total. So we have three number seven bars as layer one. And then we have three number seven bars as layer one. Uh, we have you know the shear reinforcement here. We're not going to be looking at that today, but you can go ahead and set that to whatever you want it to be. And then for our forces, we are going to uh, select user entered and no load combinations. Right? We've already determined our ultimate moment uh, for this. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, enter it in manually. So now if we switch over to the flexure tab, right, we go to our demands and we are going to enter in our load of 295 kip feet. Then we can start to look at our um, our flexural capacity for, for this section. So first thing we want to do is look at the effective flange width, right? So we want to look at um, our the first option here, which is going to be uh, eight times the thickness of the flange on either side of the beam. That's our overhang and then plus the width of the beam. The second uh, criteria would be the distance, right? Half the distance, the clear span to the next web. And then the third would be uh, one fourth of the total length of the beam uh, face to face. So based on those, our minimum is gonna be 69 inches, which is this last one here, LN over four. 
Uh, then we want to go ahead and check to see where our uh, uh, our neutral axis is, right? Um, and so we uh, first find out what our total area of steel is. We find out what our compression block is, right? Our A, and then we look at that compared to our um, height of flange. So in this case, it is less than our height of flange. So we can go ahead and um, continue on with the calculations just like we do for a normal concrete section. Um, then we go through and we kind of do the same stuff we've done before for concrete sections, right? Figure out what our beta one value is, uh, calculate our depth to reinforcement, which in this case is going to be to the midst, you know, in between the two um, rows of reinforce and reinforcement. So somewhere here in between those two uh, layers. Uh, we calculate our strain values, right? We determine what our feed factor is going to be, which is uh, 0.9. We check for our minimum steel, uh, which we meet all of the criteria for that. And then finally, we check what our positive flexural capacity is uh, based on our typical moment, moment strength calculation. Um, and we get a total capacity of 330 kip feet, which is greater than our demand of 295 kip feet. And we end up with a DC ratio of 0.89. So that is uh, our intro to T-beam design uh, using CalcBook. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.